Check, check. There we go. Okay. Why is it so heavy? This is so like, it's like speckled with people. If you guys are in the back row, could you guys come up? Because I'm like, Emily, Emily, Emily. Way back there. Okay. You can come forward. It's okay. All right. So guys, I know that in the back row, there's this temptation. It's called your phone. So if you guys could do something for me, everybody hold up your phone. Hold up your phone. If you're in the front row, stick in your pocket or put, put under your chair, put under your chair like that. If you are in this row, put in that pocket in, in the chair in front of you, okay? And do not, do not touch it. Unless somebody's dying, you don't touch that phone, okay? Give me, if we can just stay focused for like 20 minutes, I promise you will survive. We cool? Do this together? Okay, one announcement that I missed is we are going to be headed to Mexico summer 2017. So... For high schoolers, if you're a high schooler, it's going to be awesome. We're finalizing details and dates and when that trip's going to be, so check and wait for that. But be praying through that now. If that's a trip that the Lord wants you to be a part of, we would love for as many as you to go. We'll take like 50 if we have to, but it's going to be awesome and real Mexican food. So that's kind of legit. I don't know. Uh, so tonight we're on week two of our worship series, Heart of Worship. Last week, Tyler brought the house down. Did you guys get up for Tyler last week? This week, week two, call it the awe factor. Everybody say the awe factor. Knock your neighbor and say the awe factor. The awe factor. All right, so the awe is a feeling of reverential respect mixed with the fear or wonder. And awesome is just the recognition of something that's worthy of awe. We have a lot of things that we think are awesome in this life. There's just, there's just Facebook uh, page that is just dedicated to awesome people doing awesome stuff. So this past week, they, like, they posted this video. So check this out. When I'm a dad that day, I'm going to be, one day, I'm going to be that awesome. That's legit. He's got, like, his cargo shorts on, and he's killing it. Because he's got those dad baggy jeans on, and he's just, like, knocking it out. I want to be that awesome one day. There's so many things that we think are awesome. How many, de- how many times a day do you think you use the word awesome? <laughs> Too many. Like, we need to have, like, you know, like, alcohol is anonymous for awesome people. Awesome anonymous. Because you say awesome forever. That's so awesome, man. That's awesome, dude. That's awesome. That's so awesome. That's awesome, man. Everything is awesome. There's actually a song out there. Everything is awesome. I mean, literally, everything is awesome today. Everything. But I would wonder if everything that we talk about is awesome is, is deserving of reverential respect mixed with fear and wonder. Like when Connor lands a bottle flip, I want to stand back. Oh, wow. You're amazing. I, I fear you almost right now because you're so incredible, Connor. Anybody feel that way? Like, there's a lot of awesome things, like awesome food. I'm just like, wow. And just worship in the moment. But we use awesome all the time for little dumb things. Anybody guilty of that here? I'm guilty of it. Okay, so I think we have this problem. You guys have a problem. Listen up. Back there, you have a problem. You do. Not just one problem. I know you guys got a lot of problems. But one problem is the overuse of awesome. Okay, so it's recognized that tonight we overuse the word awesome. And and so at some point, awesome became shallow. And I think the moment this happened was in the Garden of Eden. Because in the beginning of time, God created the heavens and the earth. You guys know this story? the beginning of Genesis. God created the heavens and the earth. Everything was perfect. Everything was beautiful. And, and we were initially created to worship God. Creation was created to worship God. He was awesome. The focus was on him. Genesis 2.25 says that Adam and his wife were both naked and they weren't ashamed. That's crazy. I mean, I look at myself in the mirror, I'm ashamed. You know, like no one else is even in the room and I'm ashamed. But the, the reason they weren't ashamed because they weren't focused on themselves. 
They were focused on God and his amazingness and his awesomeness. But the moment they ate of the fruit, guess what? Their, their focus shifted. Their focus shifted from God to things of this world. They saw their nakedness. They, they felt shame. They, they became selfish. And so ever since then, we're in this battle, this constant battle for trying to, to, to worship either ourselves or people or things and things of this earth or God. And so we have dumbed down the word awesome. It's like skim milk. Anybody has skim milk at your house? It's like whole milk, but they just dump water in it. You know, so it's, like it's, it's pretty much water with a little bit of milk in it. That's what we've done with the word awesome. It's like the skim milk. Awesome. All right, so what we have to do as Christians, we need to restore our awe. Restore our awe. We need to refocus our awe. We need to take that water out, the whole milk of awe. We got to get back to the true essence of awe. What I hope tonight, after tonight, you never say awesome again. I never want to hear it. It's a banned word from this youth group after tonight. Okay, cool. So to restore our awe, the first thing that we must do is we need to recognize who deserves Awe. We have to recognize who deserves awe. I wonder how it is that we can spend our entire day thinking about ourselves. Like, how much time of the day do you think you think about you? Like, 95% of the day? And then you think about somebody else, but you're really thinking about them because you're worried about what they're thinking about you, so you're really actually thinking about you? Most of the day, it's so easy to think about ourselves. We think about what people are thinking about us or saying about us or success or, or those likes or whatever it is that we're focused on. And the reality is what we spend our time on, what we invest our time in, it reveals our values. It shows what we value. If I'm going to spend time doing something, it means I value it enough to do it. Some things in life you're forced to do. But the things that you choose to do, you do it because you think it is valuable enough to spend your time on. When you play Xbox, you don't do it because you're like, eh, whatever, I got to play Xbox. No, you're like, I believe that it is valuable enough for me to spend my time playing Xbox. So what we spend our time thinking about reveals what we value in life. But the problem is most of us spend most of our lives thinking about ourselves, worried about our status and what we must do, stressed out with life. I hear from you guys all the time, you're just stressed out with school. You're like, no, I've never felt that. Yeah, you have. You guys are always stressed out with school. They give me so much homework. So we live in this, in this focus and, and this, this focus on this earth and we're valuing the things of this earth. But when I read the Psalms, I notice that, that David had this, this just focus on the awesomeness of God. If you read the Psalms, you see that, that David is constantly talking about how great God is, how amazing his love is, how, how amazing he's been towards David. And I think the reason that he stands in such awe of God is because he recognizes his own non-awesomeness. If you know the story of David, he was an adulterer. He took another man's wife and slept with her. And then to cover it up, he murdered her husband. Anybody think that's a cool dude? Like you want to chill with that guy? No. And so in Psalms, he says this, he says, have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only I have sinned and I've done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. That's a guy who knows he's not awesome. But some of us in this room think we're pretty awesome. We think we're pretty cool. We think we're, we're not that bad of people. But until we can recognize our position in not being awesome, not being worthy of awe, like you're not worthy of awe, Avery. I'm sorry. You're pretty cool, but you're not awesome. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that hurts. But, we're, but we've dumbed down the word awesome. You're cool. But we, we've turned our awe on ourselves when we are not deserving of awe. Nothing on this earth is deserving of awe. Even when Tennessee wins in the last second, that's not deserving of our awe. That's not even really, truly awesome. Because only God, only God is great enough and good enough and powerful enough to be deserving of our awe. Only he is awesome. He is the only one who deserves our awe. He is the only one who is worthy of wonder and fear and reverential respect. 
towards him because he is powerful and mighty. When we recognize that you and I are sinful in ourselves, you and I are like David, an adulterer, a murderer, undeserving of the love of God. When we recognize our position in Christ before God without Christ, and we realize I'm not that awesome, but guess what? He is awesome. He is powerful. And it's in that recognition when we realize that he is powerful, he is worthy, he is awesome, and we are not awesome, it's when we recognize that and we get that right that we can put God in his proper place and ourselves in our proper place. God is, God is infinitely awesome. Think about this. The angels worship God for eternity. But I don't think the angels worship God because they're like, dang it, I got a sign to sing holy, holy, holy for eternity. Like that's like the, the crappy job of angels, you know? And sometimes people are like, are we, is all we're gonna do in heaven is just worship God? That is so boring. I think the, re the reason we think like that is because everything on earth that we think is awesome, everything is awesome, everything we think is awesome, guess what? It doesn't fulfill us. It doesn't last very long. Like even this amazing feeling of getting a good grade or your team winning or, or accomplishment or that picture that just blows up, whatever it is, it is awesome for a moment, but it's gone. That feeling is gone. But the thing about God is he is infinitely awesome. You will never run out of things to worship about God. The angels, though they've been worshiping for eternity, will worship for eternity going forward. They have never run out of things to worship about God. His greatness is unending. It's unsearchable. Does that make sense? But our minds are so set on this earth, and we think that this earth and this world is it, that we could approach God like we approach this world. So I'll give like 20 minutes to sing worship songs on a Wednesday night or a Sunday morning, but that's like I'm maxed out. But I wonder if we truly recognize how awesome God is. He created the heavens and the earth. With his word, thunder strikes and the thunder goes forth. It says he controls the thunder. I mean, with his finger, he could just take you out right now. Boom, you're gone, Emily. Take you out. He's powerful. With his words, he can speak and anything happens and comes to life. This God is powerful and mighty and his goodness and his glory is unsearchable. So we got to take our minds off of the awesomeness of this world that's fleeting and recapture our awe of a God who is unendingly awesome. And then when we recognize then that God in his mercy and his love, like we just sang, sent Jesus for you and I, how much more should that elevate our awe of God? That God, though he's powerful and he could destroy us in a moment in his wrath, has chosen instead to love us, to give himself, to come for us, to die for us, and to offer us life, to make us his child. But yet we move past it. Like, that's cool, Craig, that's great. We'll worship, we'll sing about it, we'll, we'll hear a, a, a message. But tomorrow, who cares about that? I'm gonna go on with my life. There's other things to focus on. There's other things that matters. But we should never move past it because that is infinitely awesome that God has chosen you and me. He is awesome, we are not. But for some reason, he said, I want you to be my child. You're valuable in my sight. How much more should that elevate our awe of our God. So first, we have to realize who deserves the awe. It is only God. He is alone awesome. You're cool, but he's awesome. And then when we recognize that he is the one deserving of our awe, then we have to live in constant, everyday awe. We don't, miss we don't move past it. I know that we get distracted by a million things. You're probably thinking, even as you're sitting here, your mind's going, things I got to do, things that happened today, things that went wrong. I know. I'm not stupid. I know you're not completely 100% focused on my message right now. You're thinking about other people and interactions and things that went wrong, things you got to do. We get so distracted by the things of this world that we, we, we don't even have time to live in awe of God because we put all of these things before him because all these things matter and they come first. But David seems to recognize that the awe of God should precede everything else that we do. It should motivate our actions, that when we stand in the awe of God, when we recognize how awesome he is, then we go out of that awesomeness into the things that we must do. In Psalm 145, he says, I will extol you, my God and my King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you, and I will praise your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised, and his greatness is unsearchable. Today I was listening to an interview by Tim Tebow. 
He's my man. I love that guy. Like he, he got gypped, y'all. Like he would be, he would win a Super Bowl if he was still playing football. Like he's awesome. But he was talking today about even Tim Tebow is talking about this need to to put the greatness of God before everything he does. It's in the recognition of God's power that we can go into life. It's the recognition of his awesomeness that you can go into your day and be successful and be the best student and best friend and best child and best athlete. And whatever you do during your day, it's when he is going before you, when you recognize it's his greatness that motivates you. Then you move forward in that power. His greatness and awesomeness needs to precede everything that we do. We don't move past his greatness to get on with everything else we do. We allow his greatness to motivate everything that we do. And he goes on and says, one generation shall commend your works to another and shall declare your mighty acts. On the glorious splendor of your majesty and on your wondrous works, I will meditate. They shall speak of the might of your awesome deeds and I will declare your greatness. It shall pour forth the fame of your abundant goodness and shall sing aloud of your righteousness. We started this, um, this school year talking about standing strong and moving, taking action. But I think we miss the element of living a life in awe of God. Because when we recognize God's glory and his might, then his glory and his might works through our lives and we have something to tell to others. It's his mighty work that works in our lives. It's his ability to move. It's not our ability. And so if we're moving past the greatness of God, how can we expect to make a difference in our everyday lives? Because it's my awesomeness that's going to make a difference. And I'm not awesome enough. I don't have what it takes to make a difference. But it's when I stand in the awe of God and I allow the glory of God and the power of God to work through my life, then I can tell of his good works tell of his righteousness, then my life becomes an outflow of his glory and his might and his power, and it's not me. How much of life do we live in our own power because we're not willing just to stand and allow his power to flow through us? And I wonder how much we miss out on. How much every day when you're walking the schools of your campus or you're in a relationship with your friends, do you miss out on the power of God working through you? And as Christians, how God works through us is through the power of his Holy Spirit. And what I've realized recently is I go into a lot of relationships and conversations without the Holy Spirit. But my words aren't awesome. I can't speak life into anybody. I can't encourage anybody. I can't challenge anybody. I can't do anything on my own power. But when we allow his power to flow through us, then then he can give insight and power and love and, and give us everything that we need to love and serve the people around us and be a witness of his glory and his might. But I think we have to daily, constantly come back before God and recognize that he is the one who's awesome. He's the one who deserves our praise. He's the one who deserves the glory. And so instead of coming on a Wednesday night and saying, God, how great you are, how amazing you are, what if every day we started our days like that? What if throughout our day it was just, Lord, how amazing you are. God, I need your power in my life. I am not worthy, but I know you are working in me. Would you work through me? Would you give me strength? Would you give me courage? Would you give me wisdom? Just constantly allowing his power to flow through us, recognizing his glory and his might, praising him for it, and allowing that power to flow through you and I. But when we miss the awe of God, I believe we miss out on what he has for our lives. You're not just at school to get to college. You're at school to make a difference for the kingdom of God. You're not just placed in your family by accident. You're placed in your family to mold and shape your siblings, to love and even mold your parents. You're on the teams you're on. You're involved in, in the activities you're involved in, not just to do stuff, to check it off a list. You are involved in those things because God has placed you there to be, to be the avenue through which he can show his glory to the world. But man, when I walk in my own abilities, my own awesomeness, which is not awesome, I miss out. Life just becomes mundane. It becomes, I got to do this, I got to do this, I got to do this. Oh my gosh, I have this and I have this and I got to get through this. And oh my goodness, my life sucks. It's terrible. I mean, I hear a lot of you guys who are in school say, man, I wish I was homeschooled. Like homeschoolers have it so good. I know homeschoolers do have it good. But you are in your school for a reason. Do not miss that. 
You are not where you are by accident. God has placed you where you are to be the way that he can show his power through you. But when we choose to do things in our own power, man, it becomes a drag. But when we stand before God and recognizing that he is awesome, we are not, but he has still allowed us to have the life we have, to live the life we live, then our lives should be a response of praise to him in everything that we do. What if we changed our attitude towards life from a have to to a get to? See, have to is like, oh my goodness, I have to go to school today. Like, I have to go hang out with this person. And it comes a drag. It comes like this huge weight on you that you got to carry around. Like, oh my goodness, another day of life. Like have to people are not fun to be around. Like they're just a drag to be around. Some of you guys are have to people. Okay, you need to wake up because we need to, if we really understand God's glory and our non-glory and non-awesomeness, then everything we should do should be a get to. Man, you get to wake up and go to school. Do you know there are hundreds of thousands of kids around the world who would love to go to the school that you go to, to get the level of education that you get every day, to go to a school where they're not worried about food, they're not worried, even in this country, There are kids that go to school every day and they wonder if they're going to get killed or shot or something's going to go down. They're worried for their safety, but you go to schools where you are safe, where you have every opportunity to succeed. Man, you guys are so abundantly blessed. And when you realize, God, I am so undeserving of what you've given me, so I am going to be thankful. I'm going to wake up today. I get to go to school. I get to. That's a completely different perspective. Let's leave our have-to attitude behind. And when we stand in awe of God, man, I get to. Like, I get to wake up in the morning and come here and love you guys. You guys are not always easy to love. I get to do what I do. Man, Court, you get to be at the place you are. I mean, it's so much easier to look at the grass that's like greener on the other side. Man, if I was just homeschooled, life would be so much better. Man, if I was just in this other family, man, they got it good. It would be so much better. Man, if I just had this skill or I was just this or I could be this person, it would be so much better. But the grass is not greener on the other side. It's still hard. It's still a struggle. But God has placed you. God has given you the gifts. He has given you everything that you need. And we are blessed. I'm abundantly blessed. When I wake up in the morning, I could, I could literally lay in my bed and praise God for, for hours of all of the blessings he's poured out on me. But you and I choose so often to focus on the two or three negative things in our lives. And I think what holds us back from truly living lives of worship is awe. Is awe, standing before a, a mighty, powerful God and saying, God, I am unworthy, but thank you that you have chosen in your goodness and your grace and your love to allow me to wake up in the home I wake up, to be in the family I'm in, to go to the school where I go to, to be involved, to have the friends that I have, it could be so much worse. Some of you have been able to travel overseas and I've been able to spend time in Africa. And man, what I find in Africa is they don't have nothing, but they have an awe of God. And the recognition of how, God, how great God is. I mean, they're some of the greatest worshipers I've ever been around. Church lasts like four hours, but they don't get tired. They're like, let's do this. Let's dance. Let's sing of God's greatness and his glory. And it's not because of the situation in their life. Everyone was giving gracious, generous people, and they could have everything to complain about. They would see your life, and they would think you're a king or a queen. They still praise God because I think that they have an awe of God's glory and his goodness that we miss out on so often. So not only do we have to recognize who deserves awe, that's not you and me, it's not other people, it's not things of this world that deserve our awe and our affection and our attention and our time, it is God. And that he has to go before everything we do. It's his power and his glory that has to motivate us and move through us if we're ever gonna make a difference where we're at. And if we're gonna go into life with joy, with purpose, if we're gonna live lives of worship, we got to stand in awe of God, not just on a Wednesday night. It's awesome. We get, to, we get to stand together. We get to sing of God's glory. But this should be a catalyst. This should be a starting point for our worship as we leave this place. 
I mean, I want you guys to get in your cars, to get home, and to continue worshiping God. Thank you, God, for how great you are. Thank you for how much you've blessed me. Thank you, God. You are mighty. You are holy. You are powerful. But if we're honest, how many of us actually spend time doing that or spend our lives doing that? But I believe if we were to live in awe of God, allow his glory to go before us, to give him our awe, it would change everything. I'm going to ask the band to come back up. And I want you guys to be able to start somewhere when you leave here tonight. So there's three things that I challenge you to do as you leave this place. Number one, you just spend time before God and ask forgiveness. Just confess, Lord, I'm sorry for not living in awe of you and spending my life being focused on things that don't matter. We need to come humbly before God and say, Lord, I, I know that I've not been living the way that you deserve, the way that I should. It starts with the recognition of where we're at. We come before God humbly as, as David did, saying, God, I know my sin, and I know I'm unworthy of you. Number two, ask him to open your eyes to his greatness and to restore your awe in him. Because if you allow him to open your eyes, I believe that we can start seeing God's awesomeness just in the mundane, everyday things of life. Like, I'm driving down the street. The first time I drove from my work, to hear, from my home to hear. I was just like, wow, God, your beauty is incredible. Like in the early in the morning when there's, there's fields and it just, it's just beautiful. Well, now I've, I've driven that like a hundred times. Guess what? I don't really recognize that anymore. I've come too familiar with it. So for some of us, I think we become too familiar with God, too comfortable with where we're at. So we need him to open our eyes and restore our awe for him, to start seeing him working in our lives on a daily basis. Number three is just ask him to make his power known through your life daily so that your life begins to, to shine to other people. Man, if you live to get to attitude life, man, people would start to notice that someone is different about you. Because if you show, if at your school, I wonder how many people have a get to attitude or a have to attitude. Most people have a have to. I mean, I'm going to guarantee you that your schools, are, your schools are filled with more negativity than positivity on a daily basis. All right, oh my gosh, I hate that. This teacher's terrible. Give me more homework. I hate him. What if you brought a get-to attitude? Man, that would be powerful. So spend some time with the Lord, confessing, asking, allowing him to be, to move through you in his power and his glory. Never say awesome again. I'm just kidding. You can say awesome. But let's, let's direct our awe to the one who truly deserves it. He's the only one who does. So as we close tonight, I want us to stand together to worship this awesome, unstoppable God, recognizing that He is the one worthy of our awe, that we must live our lives constantly in awe of Him. How great is our God.